You know, in neighborhoods everywhere, there are vacant lots. Sometimes those lots sort of fall by the wayside, become derelict, and that's what this lot was like up here in White's Creek. But an enterprising gardener has changed all of that, and it's beautified this whole little neighborhood uh, hidden back here off of this road, and I can't wait for you to see it. So David Sprouse is the gardener that has created this amazing space out of an old abandoned lot. And uh, tell me how this all came to be. Well, this is actually a reserve parcel for the neighborhood that I live in, and I acquired it just from a buddy of mine. And uh, it was total woods. I mean, it, it looked like the woods you see around this plot. Uh -huh. And um, I cleared it with a chainsaw and brush piles. It took me about a year to clear it, and my full intention was to do a garden. Right. And uh, it's actually zoned agriculture. So um, there were a lot of challenges just to get this garden up and going. So one of the things that you did as you were clearing was you, you sort of had your creative mind engaged also, and you built some of these structures that you have in the garden and created some unique gates. Tell, tell me about, you know, kind of coming up with these ideas and then how you executed them. Well, uh, what I did is I selected, you know, marked various trees mm -hmm. um, on my property. This actually is sassafras wood. It came from my my residential property which is very close by um, and I would get dead wood you know and things that I felt like I could use it didn't cost anything and right. this is where this arbor I think there are some cedar here and black locusts across the top but uh, you've chosen wood that will stand yeah, up to the elements for a number of years so yeah, you don't have to, to rot. worry about this rotting you know in the near future and um, this is a, a bed frame that actually belonged to my grandfather uh -huh. uh, it's been sitting in our barn for quite some time and I just I said wow this would make a good gate so it's lightweight so it's easy to open and and you have just immediate access yeah. to the garden this way um, well you know I didn't really have I didn't design this garden I guess in a way a, a typical designer would right. I didn't plan the entire thing you know, I just did it in little pieces and bits and chunks yeah and this rose garden is probably two years old uh -huh. um, and the slabs here, red oaks, and I had, once again, there was a dead red oak on, on the property, and I thought, wow, what, these would make great stepping stones. Uh -huh. And So again, just sort of recycling, upcycling from nature. Right. And uh, even though it's very rustic with the wood round stepping stones and your limbs along the, the pathways, it's also got kind of a formal aspect to it. Yes. A, a formal layout and it ended up being a triangular shape, obviously. Mm -hmm. And all the rocks that you see, too, are basically rocks that I just dug up from the property. As you know, being a Tennessee gardener, it didn't take long to find a rock. Find plenty of rocks. Yeah. So uh, it may not be, you know, as smooth as, as a, a typical type rock path, but, you know, once again, you're using resources that are free yeah. here. One of the things that you've done, David, that I think is really unique and really beautiful is that you've mixed your plantings up in this garden. The vegetables hang out with the roses and there's privet mixed in, golden privet, not bad privet, but golden ornamental privet. You've got melons mixed in with other ornamentals. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy behind doing it that way. Well, you know, I've planted vegetables in many of these gardens, as we can see, you know, corn and beans. And mm -hmm. as I planted melons and things through the years, as you know, melons spread and, right. you know, it's to keep the grass from coming up underneath them. Mm -hmm. I had these mulched beds that I, I did with leaves. And as you know, uh, melons and things like that do real well in that mulch leaf. So it's really an experiment in companion planting and plant diversity. Right. And it seemed to, this year, all of my melons and things look really well. Right. And obviously the squash are happy. Yes, the squash, the uh, yellow zucchini actually. Yeah. Uh, has done quite well. And um, once again, there's some shade that it gets, but the sun comes this way and it, it seemed to, seems to be thriving. Yeah, your shade is just basically from one big tree. So as the sun moves across, right. you get sun at different times today and there's plenty exactly. uh, of sun to grow these things successfully. You've also got roses growing on, again, a very unique structure, something yes. that you've built a, a lot out of just salvaged pieces. <clears throat> well, the story behind this piece is my neighbor uh, gave me this, it's an old, wood rack uh -huh. a, he said it was about a rick of wood 
and um, he said, do you want it? And I said, sure. And he also gave me these clothesline pieces. Uh -huh. And I started thinking, wow, I could make a, you know, a gateway entrance with this. And these are cow panels. And right. once again, the only money I spent was on the cow panels. Right, which you can yeah. pick up fairly inexpensively yes. at a farm supply exactly. store. Yeah. And they're sturdy. I mean, nothing, once this is tied up, That's right. you can grow anything on this and, and it's not going to take it down. So you've done a variety of raised beds out of different kinds of materials, but I think anything, anybody who's being really resourceful can find any number of ways to make raised beds. But I particularly like these that are done out of logs. Yes. Uh, again, recycled material right from the property. Um, and I'm assuming this is some kind of wood that also cedar. is going to be rot resistant. So these are cedar, cedar yep. logs. Red cedar. Eastern. Cedar trunks. Yes. And then on up behind that, you have again reclaimed wood that you have used to create this structure that you're now growing pole beans yes. on. Um, so this, what kind of wood is this made out of? I'm not sure about this particular wood. I know they grow really straight when they're young on the right. back property. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It may but be you just hickory. formed a structure out of that, and yeah. then you have smaller twigs that are forming kind of the network that the vine is yes. actually growing on. The framework is actually done with cedar, uh -huh. uh, you know, which is going to be rot resistant. Right. All the little webbing here are fruit tree. When I prune my fruit trees, you know, you get six to eight feet long prunings and I, I've, I've always, they're very linear and when I saw right. them I was like, I should be able to use yeah. these for they're something. They're also very pliable and flexible so exactly. you can weave them in and out if you need to or you can, you know, tie them together. Exactly um, and one them. thing I found is these little ties, you know, they're the cheap, little zip, ties. little zip ties and they they do amazing things and if, you know, if that came loose you just put another one on it. It's not a lot of screws and heavy maintenance exactly. here. So peach trees are another fruit, obviously, that you are growing very well here, but that sometimes are a little persnickety in this area. Absolutely. We're a little north. A lot of humidity. A lot of humidity, yeah. and there are some challenges. Yes. I have really three varieties, a Hell Haven, a Red Haven, and a Red Baron. Mm -hmm. Now, probably the, the ones that have Haven in the, the, the last part of the name have done the best. Right. But as you know, in Tennessee, the peach borer can be quite a problem. They bore into the fruit and the fruit drops to the ground and the insect or whatever it is comes back up right. you know, through the ground. And um, I do spray with organicide. Mm -hmm. I do try to do all my edibles with organic sprays and it does help. You're not going to get a full, you know, sure. you know, crop, but you know, I can get peaches if I can keep the deer and the pest off of them, which right. is another challenge. Another challenge, so, because yeah. you're not fenced here. No. So, so there are those challenges also. Yes, absolutely. Well, it, it is amazing to me that you've taken this from just sort of an abandoned wooded lot to what we see today. And I want to thank you for sharing your time and your expertise and your know-how and showing all of us that you can create something beautiful if you just have a little bit of creative vision. Well, thank you, Troy. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.